There are over 180,000 data analyst jobs in the US alone. So why is everyone struggling to become a data analyst? For a job that you could once get without any experience, we now have hundreds of people competing for every single job listing. The job market is not what it used to be. In this video, I'll show you the reality and how to win during these circumstances and actually get a job in data even as a beginner. For most people, it is really tough, but it doesn't have to be. People with no experience or formal education are getting jobs in data all the time. The problem is that most people are doing the wrong things. We have to start from the beginning. A company will hire you for one thing. It's not your experience or your education. They'll hire you for the value you can provide. But we don't live in a perfect world where companies can look at you and see that. So they use your experience and education to predict whether it's worth giving you a chance. Now, this is harder when you're a beginner because you don't have anything or very little to show. You probably don't have any real data experience or anything like that. And this means that companies have to take a risk. When they hire a beginner, an entry level person, they take a huge risk with a possible payoff later. You're probably not going to perform very well when you start, they'll have to teach you things and eventually you learn and start contributing to the company. But it's still a risk for them and they hire someone that hasn't been tested in the field before. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because the first step to win is to understand companies and their perspective. We just want a job and companies just want good contributing employees. So what do we do? Well, we take courses, we get certified and we do whatever we can to prove ourselves. And and we hope that one day a company will be willing to try and give us a chance. But sometimes there's a problem with the job market itself. When times are tough for companies, layoffs happen because they need to save money. People lose their jobs and they go back into the job market. And these people are now looking for jobs, but the companies are not hiring because they need to save money. So we have fewer jobs on the market available and even more experienced people competing for them. So everything is not up to you. It's also about the economy itself. In January 2023, Google let 12,000 people go. And that is just one example of a layoff. Many of these people that got laid off are experienced, they've already had a job, and they inflate the job market. It's pretty simple. More experienced people suddenly in the job market means more competition. And guess who suffers the most? It's not them, it's the beginners. Entry-level jobs take the biggest hit. Because if there's now an unemployed guy with five years of experience and you're just getting started, how could you possibly compete? It is a nightmare. And something like this affects everyone for months. This is of course an extreme example. We don't need huge layoffs and panic to notice shifts in the job market. If the company is struggling in any way financially or the future seems unpredictable regardless of why, the first thing they'll reduce to save money is hiring new people. Enough. Let's take a step back because I've got some good news for you. The job market is a lot better than what most people think. And if you know what you're doing, you can get a job. Most people just fall for something I call the loud failure illusion. I just told you that each job had hundreds of applicants on LinkedIn, right? Think about how you reacted when I said that. Because you probably hear people complain about competition and a lack of jobs all the time. But who are those people that complain? Let's say we have 100 people looking for a job. First, half of the 100 are probably not even qualified, so let's slice the number in half. We have 50 applicants left, and let's pretend that a company wants to hire five of these people. This means that five people are happy, they get their data job, and some of these people may share this moment on social media and be really excited, and they might get a couple of likes, whatever. Now we still have 45 people that got rejected, and most of these people will keep applying to jobs, they'll just improve their resumes, work on their portfolios, and learn more, and keep going. Many of these people will eventually land a job. Jobs exist, that's not the problem. But then, there are five Five people who are different. These five people are now upset. They cannot believe that they didn't get the job. And according to them, it's now impossible to land a job in data. And we don't know, their portfolio could be terrible, maybe their resume sucks, maybe they just never prepare for an interview and fail it. Perhaps they're still doing their best, but got rejected because of high competition this time. And most likely, they just gave up too early. We don't know their story. But these five people are dangerous. They go on Reddit, they scream in my YouTube comment section, look down there and you'll find them and they make a lot of noise. Five people actually make themselves louder than the other 45 combined, including the five with a job. Think about it. If someone posts, hey, I got a job, they'll get a couple of likes, right? But we mostly hear about the bad things. The job market is dead. Data analyst jobs are over. I hear this all the time, but I don't care and neither should you. Because back to our example, five people did get a job, but everyone else only heard from the people complaining and they'll almost get brainwashed. Some of these people may even give up for no reason because they hear people claim that it's 
it's too difficult. The reality is often not nearly as bad as you may think, and the people you hear about are not the ones with a job, they're already busy working. The people you hear are the complainers. If you actually want to win, you have to avoid the complainers and take action yourself. Here's what I recommend you do to land a data job, and this works whether you're looking for a new job or you're a beginner searching for your first job in data. Everyone has a different situation. Ideally, you have a degree, let's just be honest, the best degrees are in fields like computer science, statistics and finance, that is going to make it a lot easier, but you still don't need one to get a job. You can succeed even without a degree. Next step, perhaps you have some experience that could show your analytical skills on your resume or something else that could help make you stand out. Now, it doesn't have to be a data analyst position. It could be something else and still help you a lot. So determine if you have any experience or skills that you could leverage. More practically, and especially if you don't have a lot of experience or anything really to leverage, take courses, do projects and build a portfolio. I know this is really the basics, but this always works. Optionally, get certified. I have other videos on that, but just keep learning as usual. Cut out the noise and the complainers. It's not going to help you at all. These basics work and they will help you get closer to a job. And if you keep going, you will get there. Now, I want to give you some specific tips to get hired as a new data analyst as well, but this applies to other data roles too. Start by setting your eyes on the right price. Getting a job at Google as a beginner is nearly impossible. Everyone wants to work at these giant companies like Google, Apple and such. And they have a ton of cash. They can afford the senior people. The tech giants are not going to hire that many entry-level people because they simply don't need beginners. So if you waste your time on top companies, you'll compete with literally everyone with a really slim chance of succeeding at all. Instead, if you want to reduce the amount of competition and find companies that actually hire entry-level candidates, there's a better way. And we like better ways, right? So instead of just dreaming away and wasting your time, find normal companies, not Google, not Microsoft, in your area. Look for ones that you've never even heard about. Some would call them boring companies, but I don't think so. The competition will be significantly lower and your opportunity is local. This is perfect for beginners. It's just like when you're learning. You don't start by making a perfect project. You start with a simple one and build your way up. The big idea is instead of chasing the perfect job at the best company, start small because you don't climb a staircase 10 steps at a time. You take it step by step and slowly reach the top. Now we're not done yet. Let's pretend that you're interested in e-commerce, then find a company in that industry and show you passion or experience in e-commerce. It doesn't matter if your experience isn't from a job, you can still mention other things in a resume or even in the interview itself. The companies are always going to prefer a data analyst with industry experience, so it's definitely worth showing. And if you can, pick a certain industry or niche that you like and focus on it. It's going to make everything you do better, including the projects that you make, because you actually like what you're doing. You can get a data job. I believe in you, but only if you take the right courses and build a solid portfolio, which I'll show you how to do in this video right here. Have an amazing week, guys. As usual, the links to all the resources are available in the description, and I'll see you over there.